Hey, welcome. I want to quickly go over something called the law of reflection and how we're able to see things with true depth perception. This is for physics class and a basis for AP physics classes as well. We're in the middle of our waves and vibrations unit. And this topic's really easy, but there are a couple puzzles I want you to think about that relate to your everyday life that we're going to be talking through. So first of all, we're going to say that the law of reflection for waves is simply that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So what's the angle of incidence? Well, the angle of incidence is this first angle. So if you imagine the ray is going to be coming in this way and bouncing out that way. Whatever this angle is, we're saying, is equal to this angle over here. So if this is like 30 degrees, this is going to be 30 degrees over here, as measured with reference to this normal line, which is at right angles to the surface. And that's it. It's that easy. That's the law of reflection. But let's see how this works out as the basis for looking at images and looking at virtual images, seeing how we're able to see things in a mirror and understand how real depth perception actually can work. All right, so my question is, how can you see your hair in the morning with only two reflections? If you look in a mirror in the morning and you look at your hair, how are you able to see your hair? Take a moment to think about this. If you can sketch it out, that's even better. All right, and the first thing I want to say is that, remember, our eyes are going to be receivers of light information, so the light rays need to end on our eyes. And in this case, we're going to start from the light bulb, and that light's going to come down and reflect off of our hair and it's also going to reflect off of the mirror as well, right? All right, so if we start with a light ray coming from the light bulb, and then it reflects off of the hair going into the mirror, I do want you to notice that we're still following the law of reflection here. In other words, this angle A is equal to this angle B, and that's really crucial. It all follows this law. Right here, I've drawn a normal line, if you're wondering what that is. So I could also draw another surface over here, but I wanted to keep it pretty straightforward and to the point. So you don't see the surface, but you do see the normal line and get the idea that these two angles are equal to each other. So then what do you think happens next? Well, then this ray bounces off of the mirror, right? Not only does it bounce off of the mirror, it comes into our eye. And at that point, something really interesting happens. Our eyes assume that light travels in straight lines. And so... We will trace this back with both eyes to find the true depth perception of where our hair appears to be. So if we are a foot and a half in front of the mirror or three feet in front of the mirror, or whatever it is, the math, the geometry, the physics, all of it works out where this is going to be the same distance behind the mirror. All right, well, let's take a look at another version of this really quickly. So if you want to look at your nose in the bathroom mirror in the morning, in terms of true depth perception, how can you see your nose in the bathroom mirror using both of your eyes in the morning? I want you to think about this. All right, well, let's assume that light comes down from the light bulb in the room and it reflects off of every imaginable object in the room in every imaginable direction, including your nose. And there are going to be two special light rays that we're going to be looking at. So one is going to bounce off your nose heading into the mirror in one direction, and one will be in another direction. And what happens next? Well, those light rays will reflect back to your eyes, right? And they will be following the law of reflection while doing so. If I drew a line in between here and wrote that these two angles were equal to each other, and drew a line right here saying these two angles were equal to each other, hopefully that would make sense. Those lines I'm talking about drawing being the normal lines. But now my question is, all right, what important assumption does our brain make in terms of interpreting images? What does it assume light rays do? Well, it assumes that light rays travel in a straight line. And if they travel in a straight line, your eyes trace these rays. They're both coming in your eyes. Your eyes trace these rays straight back to where they cross. And that is where the image appears to be coming from. By the way, I'm drawing these lines over here, these rays over here as dotted lines. You should do that as well. They're called virtual rays. Why do you think these rays are called virtual rays? Well, because they are not truly passing behind the mirror. Like that could be inside a wall or something at one point, right? So the rays are not truly passing behind here. They just appear to be coming from here. And that's why our brain traces it back. And then once our brain traces it back all the way, it uses the two eyes to get true depth perception. Occasionally I have students who feel like they have great depth perception, even with one eye closed. There are classroom activities we can do to show that that's actually not the case. But I guess my challenge would be is just go out and see if you can hit a baseball. Have someone toss a baseball to you. Don't stand in front of it and just see if you can hit a baseball with some easy pitches 
with one eye closed and I think you're gonna have trouble, but who knows, maybe you're able to adapt and do fine even without true depth perception. But it does take two points of view at least to be able to have true depth perception. And that's it for this lesson. So hopefully this has been helpful. Stick around for some other lessons in this unit of vibrations and waves. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.